when we're plugging into our Ethernet networks, we're usually wanting to be sure that we're getting all data that leaves one connection to arrive at the other. But there will be some scenarios where you will need to filter out data as it traverses through the network. Usually this type of filtering is occurring at the router or at the firewall, and not usually at the switch, although some switches can do some fundamental data filtering for us. Usually most routers will be able to filter data in some way. And even the small office or home office routers routers that you might have at home or you might be using in a small office configuration can do certain types of data filtering. One type of data filtering is one called URL filtering. If you're concerned about where people are going on the internet when they're inside of their browsers, you can filter out specific URLs so that you cannot connect to those or you may have a whitelist of URLs that's always allowed that you could connect to from your network. There's another type of filtering called port filtering. If you would like to block different services like services that occur on port 80 or port 443 or port 25. You can usually do that at your router or at your firewall as well. There's another type of filtering that allows you to set all of these to occur at certain times of the day. Maybe certain types of services or URLs should not be contacted during the hours of 8 AM to 5 PM, but after hours will open things up a bit and allow other traffic to flow. It's up to the administrator of your network to figure out the type of filtering you need and when that filtering should occur. Here's an example of URL filtering. In this scenario, we're looking at keyword blocking where you might decide, are there certain keywords within a URL or within a web page that we might want to block? You can also specify a domain name so that you can decide that you always want to allow access to a particular domain or always restrict access to a particular domain. And there is also an exception list at the bottom because there may be certain IP addresses within your organization that should always be able to access certain sites regardless regardless of the type of filtering that you've enabled. Port filtering is a little more involved. You need to know and understand exactly what ports are being used on the network, and you need to decide which ones you're going to filter and how. In this port filtering setup, you can see that I can define a particular protocol, a starting port, an ending port, and I can put in the service type, which is a user-defined field that I can list in here. And I could specify only certain IP addresses being filtered for this particular port number, or I can set an entire range or just simply include everyone on the the network, and then this particular port filter or groups of port filters that I would create would always be associated with every device on the network. If you're configuring your data filtering to be based on the time of day, you would use something like this scheduling option. You would decide exactly what day you would like to block. You don't have to do it every day. Maybe you'd like the weekend schedule to be a little bit different than the schedule on Monday through Friday. You can choose, of course, the time of day that you would like to block. And then you can specify the time zone associated with this. Normally, your device that's doing the filtering is also automatically updating the time within the device using the NTP protocol, the network time time protocol. That way you can be assured that your schedule is going to be very accurate. And when the clock strikes midnight, it's going to be perfectly synchronized so that you can be assured that your schedule is working exactly the way you'd like.